السلام علیکم آئی ویلکم یو آل ٹو انر کلاس آف ڈبلو فور تھری فور پاور الیکٹرانکس وی ور ڈسکسنگ دا ڈی سی ٹو ڈی سی کنورٹرز اینڈ ان دا لاسٹ کلاس وی ڈسکس دی آپریشن اینڈ دی ڈیریویشن اینڈ دی اینڈ دی کریکٹرسٹکس آف اے بوس کنورٹر ان دا ٹوڈیز کلاس وی شیل موو آن ود اے تھرڈ ٹائپ آف اے کنورٹر وچ از نون ایز اے بک بوس کنورٹر سو لیٹ اے اسٹارٹ ود دا ود دا ٹوڈیز کلاس Likewise, we started the boost converter. Our emphasis shall be on the derivation of a buck boost converter using the circuit of a boost converter. So let me first of all draw the circuit of a boost converter. In this boost converter, we have we have this this particular sort of a cell where we have a single pole double throw switch which is connected with uh, with this uh, inductor so if we rotate this whole cell if we give it one rotation counterclockwise then this circuit becomes something like this where we have the inductor connected here So we have this Vs, we have this inductance L, we have this C, here we have this resistance R. So to proceed with this particular circuit, we need to first of all define the polarities of the current and the voltage so that we can process the KCL and the KVL accordingly. So let us assume that whenever we have this switch connected with this position number 1, then we have the current flowing from this side uh, to uh, from this positive terminal to this negative negative terminal and this is the polarity that we need to to stick with during the whole analysis of this converter so when the switch is connected to this position number two neither the direction of the current through the inductor nor the polarity across the inductor is changed and therefore we can assume that we have the current in this capacitive branch entering from this bottom side as well as the current enters from the bottom side into this resistive branch and consequently we have this side plus and this side negative uh, for our voltage V0. So to, to begin with the analysis we shall first of all draw the sub circuits for switch position number 1 and switch position number 2 and thereafter we shall apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law and the Kirchhoff's current law uh, to begin our analysis. So let us first of all draw the sub circuits for position number 1 and position number 2. So during this particular sub interval we have the voltage Vs it is connected with with this inductance with this side positive this side negative we have this Vl and here we have this Il and on the other side we have this capacitor connected with this load resistance R with this side positive and this side negative and for the sub circuit for for position number 2 we have this capacitor connected with this inductance so we have this is il we have here we have ic this is plus this is minus this is v naught this is l and here we have the voltage uh, across this inductor so as a, as we proceed further we shall first of all apply the kirchhoff's voltage law in the loops that contains the inductor so that we can actually establish what is the voltage uh, across the inductor so applying the kvl here we have we have minus vs plus vl that is equal to 0 so vl is equal to vs and this is equal to ldi over dt and consequently the change or the rate of change of the current through this inductor is equal to Vs over L. For this switch sub circuit for position number 2, we have to apply the KBL in this particular loop. Let us say that again we shall adopt the clockwise direction for the application of the KBL here. So again if we apply the KBL here, this is minus Vl and then minus V0 that is equal to 0 
तो वी एल इज इक्वल टू माइनस वी नॉट विच इज इक्वल टू एल डी आई ओवर डी टी विच स्टेट दैट दिस रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ करंट ड्यूरिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर सब इंटरवल और फॉर पोजिशन नंबर टू वी हैव डी आई ओवर डी टी इक्वल टू माइनस वी नॉट ओवर एल नो नेक्स्ट वी प्लॉट द वोल्टेज अक्रॉस द इंडक्टर एंड द करंट थ्रू द थ्रू द इंडक्टर टू एस्टेब्लिश द ट्रांसफर फंक्शन और द वोल्टेज गेन फॉर दिस फॉर दिस कन्वर्टर सो फॉर दैट फॉर दैट दिस इज वी एल वी एल इज इक्वल टू वी एस ड्यूरिंग द ड्यूरेशन वेन द स्विच इज कनेक्टेड टू पोजिशन नंबर वन एंड दिस इज वी स्टेट दैट दिस इज इक्वल टू डी टी एस ड्यूरिंग द टाइम वेन द स्विच इज कनेक्टेड टू पोजिशन नंबर टू वी हैव वी एल इक्वल्स टू माइनस वी नॉट सो दिस इज माइनस वी नॉट एंड दिस टाइम ड्यूरेशन इज डी डैश टी एस लाइक वाइज वी हैव वी हैव द करंट विद अ पॉजिटिव स्लोप इक्वल्स टू वी एस ओवर एल ड्यूरिंग द टाइम वी हैव द स्विच कनेक्टेड टू पोजिशन नंबर वन एंड ड्यूरिंग द टाइम वेन द स्विच इज कनेक्टेड टू पोजिशन नंबर टू वी हैव अ नेगेटिव स्लोप गिवन बाय द एक्सप्रेशन माइनस वी नॉट ओवर एल एंड थ्रू दैट वी हैव वी हैव सम average current through the inductor which is il and here we have the the ripple through the inductor delta il or half of delta il whatever you like because if it if it is considered symmetrical then we have half the delta il above this average line and half of the delta il uh, will be below this uh, average current line so again Uh, considering that this converter is operating in a steady state condition we should notice that in all steady state conditions number 1 the volt second balance is established in the inductor which means that the area enclosed here and the area enclosed here their sum is equal to 0 in other way in other words we can say that the net change in inductor current over one switching cycle is 0 so let us apply the volt second balance here so in here we have we have vs into dts plus minus v not into d dash ts that is equal to 0 which means that vs d minus v not d dash is equal to 0 which means that this vs d is equal to v not d dash and therefore v not over vs is equal to d over d over d over d dash or i can say that this v not over vs is equal to d over 1 minus d using this expression that d dash is equal to is equal to 1 minus d now we have to notice a few things uh, for this transfer function the first thing is that with this polarity in mind this certainly means that we have an inverted polarity of the voltage which is appearing at the output as a result of the switching in this particular topology where this inductance is connected uh, in in this particular uh, you know configuration and therefore we can say that we have an inversion of output voltage in a buck boost converter also if you notice here that if we have d equals to 0.5 then this v not is equal to vs for d less than 0.5 v not is less than this vs and for d greater than 0.5 v not is greater than this vs as a result this particular converter is known as a buck boost converter that is a converter which is capable of not only increasing the input voltage but it also has a tendency to decrease the output voltage another important point here is 
that we have the energy which is stored in the inductor when the switch is connected to this position number one then this inductor is actually storing the energy and this energy is then released to the output when we have the switch connected with position number two so here we are releasing this energy and for this particular reason this dc to dc converter is sometimes referred to as an indirect converter as well now let us first of all find out the let us let us first of all find out the component values here so you notice here we will we shall adopt the same uh, expression for the for finding the value of the inductor uh, inductor itself so therefore if we have this one equal to dts and here we have the peak to peak ripple this peak to peak ripple is said to be equal to delta il then this whole delta il is equal to the slope of the current vs over l times the duration during which the switch is switch is connected through the uh, position number one so therefore it is vs over l into dts that is equal to delta il and using that uh, this inductance l is equal to vs d divided by delta il into fs and this is the amount of the inductance required for designing the uh, for designing this buckboost converter now uh, because this particular converter is able to work in this ccm mod therefore we also sometimes required to find out the minimum value of the inductance which is required to ensure that the converter is always operating in a continuous conduction mod for that we need to establish or we need to have some relation that explicitly defines the minimum value of the inductance to ensure the uh, ensure the operation in a continuous conduction mode to do that or to find out the minimum value of the inductance which is required to ensure a continuous conduction mode we shall opt the method number 2 which was also explained in the previous class so let us adopt that uh, that particular thing so to find the il minimum to ensure continuous conduction mode we know that for this inductance this is the this is the boundary condition this is the end of the switching cycle ts this time period is dts here we have d dash ts this is the maximum current i maximum this is the minimum current i minimum and this is the slope of the current which is nothing but vs over over inductance l if you notice here there is some average current il which is of course as a result which which flows through the through the load so using this particular expression we should notice that this i maximum is equal to il plus let me redraw this uh, let me redraw this il to the exact value somewhere here we have this this il so this this is il plus and this let me label this as one this is half of delta il and here we also have half of delta il so the peak to peak ripple has half of its portion above this average current uh, through the inductor and half of the portion lies below the average uh, current through the inductor uh, so therefore this i maximum is equal to il which is this average value plus half of delta il and on the similar grounds this i minimum is equal to il minus half of delta il now one should notice here that this this particular expression is quite useful in defining the in defining the the current requirement of the circuit of the circuit components right so we need to establish what is the current rating for the wire that is used to wound an inductor this current flows through the semiconductor switches which are of course bjt's igbt's it may be a MOSFET or a diode. So they all require to have the maximum current ratings. 
so this maximum current i max this actually defines the uh, the bottom line for the selection of those uh, all the all those components about this i minimum this i minimum is helpful this i minimum is helpful in finding the minimum inductance to ensure a continuous conduction mod right so we shall first of all find out what is this il and thereafter we shall find out what is this half of delta il to establish the expressions for this i minimum and the i maximum so to find out this il first which is this average value uh, we shall adopt a simple strategy that this we have if we have a lossless converter then this input power is equal to the output power and therefore this vsis is equal to v not square over r right so <coughs> we have also we have this vsis is equal to vsil times d because the source current for this particular converter this source current is only flows when we have the inductor connected with this source which is which is during the duration dts so therefore this is can be equalized as d times il so whatever is the is a duty cycle times the amount of the current flowing through the inductor is the source current is and therefore this vsis is equal to vsil times d so from this we can get the value of is that is equal to that is equal to il into d so this v not square over r is equal to vsil d and this gives me the value of the current il that is equal to that is equal to v not square over d r into vs and that is equal to from here if you if you notice this particular thing we have this v not over r is nothing but this is equal to p not so il is equal to p not over vs times this d so this is the value of the of the average current il so now that this il is found to be equal to p not over vs into d we need to now find out what is the delta il divided by 2 now this delta il which is this complete delta il we have already calculated this delta il and that delta il is equal to vsl into dts so using this expression using this particular this expression this half of delta il is equal to half into vs over l into dts so that is equal to vs dvs over 2l fs and this is equal to delta il so this expression let me call this expression number x and this expression which is y if we put these two expressions in this equation let us say this is equation number b and here we have this equation number a then i can find out what is i minimum so i minimum is equal to p not divided by vs minus d minus dvs over 2l fs so for ensuring that the converter always stays in a continuous conduction mode this i minimum should be equal to 0 so right at the end of the right at this particular end look at this particular point at this particular end we have we have the current equal to 0 so i is equal to 0 and right after that we have the new switching cycle and after that the current again start to rise from this zero point to the maximum current which is this i maximum and therefore to find out the minimum inductance requirement the simplest procedure is that we put this i minimum equal to zero so at the boundary connection mode or at the at the boundary of the ccm and the dcm i minimum is equal to 0 so putting this equal to 0 so we have p not 
into Vs D minus D Vs over 2 L F S. And then when we make this equal to L minimum, then we can also write this as, uh, we can also write this as, as L minimum F S. So we have L minimum that is equal to, that is equal to 1 minus D square R over over 2F, right? So this is the minimum value of the inductance to ensure that we have a continuous conduction mode. As a matter of fact, whenever we work based on the minimum inductance requirement, we always select a value of the inductance L with at least 25% factor of safety to ensure that the converter is operating in a continuous conduction mode. So the actual value of inductance uh, L should be equal to 1.25 of the L minimum to ensure that the converter always stays in a continuous conduction mode uh, for our operation. So the next value is <clears throat> is to find out the uh, is to find out the current through the capacitor so that we can establish what is the value of the of the capacitor. For that, we need to uh, find out the capacitor current. So uh, to find out the capacitor value, let us uh, revert back to uh, to these original circuits. If you see here. What is the value of the, let me use some different color. What is the value of the current IC here? So you see when we have, uh, we have this is IC and this is also IC. In this particular case, if I apply the Kirchhoff's current law here, then we have the two currents leaving uh, this particular node. Then this IC plus IR is equal to zero. And therefore, IC is equal to minus IR, right? In this particular case, we have IC is equal to IL minus minus IR because if we apply the current here, we have the current entering here. So this is minus IL plus IC plus IR that is equal to zero. So IC is equal to IL minus minus IR. So based on that, uh, we shall be uh, we shall draw the waveform of the capacitor current. So here we have the capacitor current IC. This is the uh, this is the <coughs> this is the current which is equal to which is equal to minus IR. That is equal to minus minus IR mean minus V naught over R. And then here we have the current that is equal to I L minus V naught over R. This is for DTS and here we have D dash T S. Now if you notice this particular equation, we do not have C in here. Therefore, for all the converters where we have a two pole filter forming at the output, just like a buck converter, we cannot find out the uh, the the capacitor value based only on the current waveform because there is no such variable C which can be used to establish the value of the C. So what is the solution here? The solution is very simple. During this particular time, we have a net charge with accumulation in the capacitor that is equal to delta Q. This delta Q is equal to minus V naught over R minus V naught over R into dt which is equal to C delta V naught, right? C delta V naught. So delta V naught is equal to V naught over R dt, right? And that is equal to V naught D over F R C. And using this, this C is equal to V naught D divided by delta V naught into R into into this F and based on if you if you see here this one is the ratio of the output voltage to the output voltage ripple and therefore this C is equal to D divided by R into delta V naught over V naught into F and this is the expression of the capacitor which is required. 
Now, next particular thing here is we have established what is the uh, what is the inductance L. We have established the value of this C. Uh, what is remaining here is to establish these uh, switches here. So let me draw the uh, draw the circuit again and uh, replace the single pole double throw switch with a single pole uh, with two single pole single throw switches. So the circuit here is that we have that we have a single pole single throw switch here, which is connected with this inductance, and here we have. And here we have the here we have another switch. This is the capacitor, and this is the this is the voltage. So we have a minus V naught here, with this side positive and this side negative. Otherwise, we can also write this as uh, we can also write this as plus V naught if we can uh, sorry plus V naught if this is negative and this is positive. But again, it will always give you. Uh, the, it will always give you a negative value. So with this side positive and this side negative, we can say it is minus V naught. With this side negative and this side positive, we say this is this is plus V naught. So we have two switches. This one is S1. This is S2, uh, and we have this equal to V S. So we need to establish which device is to be used uh, to replace this uh, single pole single throw switch S1, and which device is to be used for uh, the switch S2, which is a, which is a single pole single throw switch. Again, just to remind. Uh, this single pole single throw switches can only be considered equivalent to a single pole double throw switch if this condition is met that s1 is equal to s2 complement that is when this s1 is on then this s2 is off when this s2 is off then this s1 is on so this is one of the this is the condition if we want to equate two single pole single throw switches uh, as a as a sub as an is an equivalent of a single pole double throw switch because in a single pole double throw switch there is no possibility that we have a dual uh, you know connection at the same times however in this s1 and s2 there is a possibility that both turn on at the same times uh, to avoid this we state that this s1 is uh, is equal to s2 uh, complement so for this s1 uh, let us let me draw the iv characteristics so we have this v i minus v minus i this is for switch s1 we also have uh, this minus v i minus i v for this switch s2 so let us uh, let, let us retrofit the, uh, the the system here so let us say we have this s1 we have this s1 uh, connected here so this s1 is now connected as a result we have we have a current flow in this particular direction again because we have already defined the inductor current so again uh, the current is entering from this side positive and this side negative so we have we have a positive uh, current uh, flowing from the uh, from this s1 so this s1 is actually operating here uh, for this s2 when we when we turn off this when we put turn off this switch s2 and we turn on this switch s1 then because we have the inductor current flowing here so it it goes all the way from this side and therefore this this current direction is from from this side uh, from this this is positive so this is positive and this is negative so we have again because this is the same as that of the inductor current and inductor current do not go negative uh, for our circuit as we have seen in the analysis part so we also have a positive current flowing for this switch s2 regarding the switch blocking capability when this switch s2 is turned on uh, then this s1 is actually blocking the voltage which is equal to because this side is vs let us say this is vs and this negative side because this is this is now connected it is connected with this minus v naught so for this s1 if this is plus and this is negative let us say this is x and this is y then v s1 which is equal to v x y is equal to v x minus v y and that is equal to v s minus we have a minus v naught here so this is equal to v s plus v naught which is a positive voltage and therefore we operate here right and for this uh, and when this switch s2 when the switch s2 is is turned off uh, and consequently we have turned on this switch s1 then we have suppose we have this is this is x and this is y then for switch v s2 okay let me uh, use the different uh, nomenclature here instead of using this x y let us say that this is a and this is b uh, then we have uh, then we have this v a b which is v uh, sorry let me okay 
let us say this is a and this is b then we have v s2 that is equal to that is equal to v a minus v b so during the time when we have this side connected with the uh, with the v s then this v a which is already minus v naught and we have this v b which is now with the negative sign it is connected with this v s so the total amount of voltage which is required to be blocked by this switch s2 comes out to be to be a negative voltage so if we see these two characteristic curves or the characteristics of the switch which is required to replace this buck boost converter uh, this one is clearly a diode and this one is clearly some device like mosfet we can also use a device you know, bjt we can also use igbt to replace this and consequently the the circuit that comes out in this particular expression is is this is this one so let us draw the igbt here so we have the we have this inductance here and here we have because this side is positive this is negative so this is cathode and on the other side we have the anode here we have the capacitor and here we have the and here we have the we have the resistance so this is the diode d this is q of course we require to have some some driver circuitry here this is input voltage vs this is inductance this is c this is r and here we have a minus v not available with this side positive and this side negative which is nothing but it is equivalent to what we start we suppose in the start that this side is positive and this side is negative and therefore we consider this equal to this v not so and now the last thing here for this uh, buck push converter is to identify the ratings of these two semiconductor switches that we require so for this switch q and this d both this q and this d uh, uh, we need to draw the current waveforms for them so going to this particular thing when we have the when we have the switch connected with this position number 1 when the switch is connected to position number 1 then we have the <coughs> current flowing through the switch and this is the current which flows through the switch position number 1 which is now replaced by an igbt and the position when we turn off this switch the same current flows through the the flame current flows through the through the diode so the maximum current rating for this diode and this igbt both is uh, both maximum current rating are maximum current is equal to is i maximum so <coughs> i maximum is the maximum current so to select this the minimum current rating of minimum current rating of this q and d should be greater than this this i maximum right to cater for the uh, for the transients that occur in the circuit we require to have the device which has a current rating greater than the maximum current rating of uh, of this particular circuit for as far as the voltage is concerned for this q and d if you see the maximum voltage rating <coughs> of the switch q and d if you see here when this switch s2 when this switch s2 is on then this switch s1 is blocking the voltage which is a sum of the input voltage and the output voltage so we have the maximum voltage rating of q and d for q we have v minimum should be greater than the sum of vs plus v not right so for example if we have 10 volt input and we are obtaining 20 volt output from the uh, from this particular uh, you know uh, converter then the q must be rated more than 30 volts which is not the case as we have seen for a buck converter or a boost converter so this is the first difference that the device rating in terms of the voltage has now increased as far as this diode d is concerned the minimum or the peak inverse voltage rating of this diode should be greater than the sum of the output voltage and the input voltage so again for for this particular uh, diode here we require to have uh, we require to have a diode which has a capability of withstanding the combined sum of the input voltage and the output voltage and the q and d which defines the voltage blocking capability or the or the voltage uh, withstanding capability it is greater than the buck converter and a boost converter other than that for the for the current rating the current in terms of the current rating 
the three converters that we have seen so far they all have a maximum current rating equal to the equal to the i maximum now we have uh, we have used this particular analogy of creating a cell between this single pole double throw switch and this inductance l and thereafter we rotated it we give them one counter clockwise uh, movement uh, to create a boost converter from a buck converter and then we developed the buck boost converter using uh, one more counterclockwise uh, rotation of this uh, cell which gives us the this particular converter now if you notice here that this buck converter <coughs> and the boost converter buck converter has a transfer function equal to d times vs this is for a buck converter for a boost converter we have 1 over 1 minus d into vs and if we multiply these two together it gives us the transfer function of a buck boost converter which is equal to d over 1 minus d into vs of course with an with an inverted sign so it eventually means that there is actually a cascaded operation going on uh, for the buck converter and the boost converter this is a very interesting starting point for the development of a well known converter known as the chuck converter or you can say this is the uh, this is the spelling this is a chuck converter so I advise you all to study this this chuck converter as uh, as a self learning assignment. Uh, we shall uh, not be covering this chuck converter for this particular module. Instead, uh, we shall discuss the discontinuous conduction mod in the next class, and we also see the capacitor switch capacitor uh, converters and the simulation of the converters using the analytical model and the switch model. And thereafter, we will uh, revert to the uh, to the isolated uh, switch mod power supplies. In which we will study the uh, the the basics of uh, the the isolated converters and specifically to the flyback converter. So till the next lecture, I uh, wish you all a good luck and uh, thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.